It happened on Fifth Avenue. Book 6, Summer Kisses Series By Melinda Curtis Prologue If there was one thing Dorothy Summer knew about growing old, it was that she never wanted to act her age. She may have lost all the color in her hair, gained more spots on her skin than a Dalmatian, and outlit her husband, but that didn't mean Dottie wanted to sit in her rocking chair with a bag of knitting. Regardless, age was catching up on her. Dottie blamed it on her doctor. Last month, he put Dottie on two new medications, one for her thyroid, and one for dementia. She'd been sleepy all the time. And not just sleepy, but practically a narcoleptic. Dottie had been nodding off at the most inconvenient of times, just like an old lady. Last week, she'd been having dinner with her newly retired son Parker and his second wife Evelyn. Parker had left the table to answer his cell phone. Evelyn had excused herself to go to the ladies. And the next thing Dottie knew, she was drooling on her pearl necklace, forehead practically in her French onion soup. A week before that, she'd been sitting in a private suite in a bustling bridal salon while her granddaughter Kitty had a wedding dress fitting. They had the most comfy lounge chairs, the kind you could sink into and lean your head back in. Dottie had startled awake just as she'd been sliding from the chair to the floor, skirt riding up to her New York Yankee bloomers, the ones autographed by Aaron Judge. The bride, bridesmaid, and mother of the bride had made sure Dottie was okay. And then they joked about it the rest of the day, particularly about her choice of underpants. To which Dottie had said, these bloomers are going to be worth something someday. You'll be sorry when I'm buried in them. She was a diehard Yankees fan and had called her lawyer the next day to put her wishes in print. But this age thing. Embarrassment aside, Dottie had a life to live, a bucket list of experiences to tackle, a social life to continue, and Kitty's Christmas wedding to attend. She had no time for these unexpected cat naps. What if she nodded off while driving a Formula One racer? What if she fell asleep while eating lunch at her tennis club with one of her oldest friends? She needed to do something to cut this napolepsy off at the pass. Dottie, are you listening to me? Across the tennis club lunch table from Dottie, Leo Abrams snapped his fingers. He was a big, raw-boned man, with thin, wispy white hair and bottle-thick glasses. He was a worse tennis player than Dottie. Not that they played anymore. Leo and his wife Mayim were one of Dottie and Ronald's oldest friends in the city. Leo had worked at Summer Diamonds from the day Ronald had started the business. Of course, Ronald had died long ago. But Leo and Mayim had kept to their first Monday of the month lunch date at the tennis club when they were all in town. Mayim had died a few months ago. And now, it was just Dottie and Leo. Dottie? Leo said again, flagging down the waiter. Are you with me? Dottie checked her chin for drool. Did I snore? No. But you had that glazed donut look in your eyes. Leo held out his coffee cup for the waiter to fill. You didn't have a word to say about me lamenting the fact that I have season tickets to the Yankees and the Met and no one to take with me. That's because I was thinking about lane change monitors, like the one Tim has in his new car. Dottie pretended to hold a steering wheel, then turned it to the right. Beep beep beep. Warning. She jerked her pretend wheel back to its starting position. A lane change monitor? Leo frowned. You don't drive. But as you know, I drift out of my lane. Dottie dropped her head to her shoulder and fake snored. Ah. Leo nodded. Grief is the same way, isn't it? One minute you're fine and the next, loss sucks you into a deep hole. His gaze drifted toward the window and the blue-gray October sky. Life should come with early warning systems. Maybe then, I'd have known when Mayim's time would come. She wanted ice cream and the Yankees were playing. I griped about it and went down to the corner market and when I came back, tears filled his eyes. She was gone. You and my turtle should talk. Dottie's grandson Garrett, who she'd nicknamed Turtle, hadn't dated at all since his fiancé's unexpected death 18 months ago. What we need are crystal balls to apologize to the ones we're missing and to, to, to make sure they're okay. Leo blew his nose in his cloth napkin. 
And again, Dottie's thoughts turned to Garrett, on the precipice of turning thirty. There always seemed to be a sadness in his eyes, accented by those glasses he'd started wearing. Garrett was a skilled gem cutter, Leo took credit for that, and a jewelry designer extraordinaire, Dottie took credit for that. Although recently, Dottie had heard rumblings from her other grandsons that Garrett might have met his match in an extraordinary collection of pink diamonds that he was trying to turn into a one-of-a-kind piece of jewelry, something worthy of red carpets and royalty. I've been trying to contact Mayim, Leo admitted in a downtrodden tone, bringing Dottie back to the present. She left so many loose ends, both in life and in my heart. Like the fashion gala. Do I go? And if so, who do I take? Meet Dottie extended her hand in the air as if she were in school and knew the answer to a hard question. She'd only gone once and... Something had happened. Whatever it was escaped her at the moment, floating just out of reach. Dottie lowered her hand because something Leo said finally sunk in. You've been trying to contact Mayim? Did she leave a forwarding address? Did such a thing exist in heaven? Yes, Leo whispered, leaning forward. I found a business card. I threw all of Ronald's business cards away. The same way she dumped her new prescription pills a few days ago. If this direct line to heaven is real, Dottie continued slowly. I think I need to buy a service plan for Turtle. He hasn't been himself since Willa died. I can fix that, Leo said, looking like a man with purpose. He held up his cell phone. No need for a fancy phone plan. I found an app. It's pay as you go. An app? Dottie sked. Kudos to you, Leo. I didn't think you were that good with technology. Weren't you the one who was forever losing his email password? Dottie, Leo extended his arm toward her and snapped his fingers repeatedly. I was not dozing off. Was I? Dottie wiped her chin, relieved to find it dry. Listen. And she did, clapping excitedly when she understood Leo's communication plan. Let's do it today. And take Garrett. After all, there was no time like the present to check another item off her bucket list and help a family member in the process.